Hello, this is Adam Humphreys again, and today I'd like to discuss these objects right here. Um, now, I will say that uh, even though we've been going through these um, fairly linearly, I probably won't get to the lighting and cameras and deformers and emitters until some time later. After these, I'll, I'll probably move on to um, modeling and the actual modeling tools used, and then materials. Then we'll get into UV mapping, hopefully. So, all right, let's move on. Let's get a cube in here. And let's first use the array object. So if we drag the cube inside of the array, it, uh, it just does what we would what we would expect. It makes an array. So I'm size that cube down a little bit. And you can use this for several different things. You can use it for spokes on a wheel, or if you're making a complex object that you have will have three several different sides to it, but not symmetrical sides. Then that can be very useful. And also notice down here you can adjust the radius, so if the radius is zero then that cube is going to stay right in the center. Now if we actually moved the points of that cube out then we get the, the same result there, but notice that the uh, axis of the cube is right here. So we can, of course we can increase the number we have and also notice these things they allow you to actually animate this to more or less a sine wave that goes around and around we hit play button there. Notice it just goes just in a sign. Increase the frequency and increase the copies. So you can come up with a few different things for that. Render that. Moving steps there. Okay. <coughs> that generally covers the array. Um, can be very useful. Usually I don't use the animating part, but uh, just just moving objects around. It can be really helpful. All right, next let's move on. I think let's go cover the symmetry object. The symmetry object of, is of course essential. First, we're going to split this up here. When you're doing um, character modeling, or just simply need something that is equal on both sides. Oops. We have to go to deselect only select visible elements there. Then we can delete that side, just stick it in here. And uh, also, notice that you can you can perform symmetry several different times if you would like. So we can change actually which axis it's reflecting on right there. We'll change that. And, that it, and it will actually weld the points together, which is what this is here. Or if you don't want it to weld the points together, it won't. You notice it uh, breaks that fong right there. But usually you want to weld points and if it's not welding some points you can bump up the tolerance a little bit. But usually it's better to, to try to make corrections on your points if they're not actually in the center. If they're, if they're just a little bit off and you see there's a hole there, usually it's best to just go to that point and make it right where it should be. And we could cut this again and add another symmetry object if we wanted to. Alright, next. I think next, let's cover the bool object. We get a cube. Let's going to control drag and duplicate that cube. Size it down a little bit. Bring it out. <coughs> the bool object actually cuts. Oops. We'll actually use another object to cut into the object above it. And of course it does more than that, I'll show it momentarily. So if we go to NG, or the wire, what the lines mode there, we can see what's happening. Now of course, even though we render that with control R, the objects are still still separate. We still have control over them. But uh, gener generally you might want to actually model that. Uh, the geometry they produced can vary, as we see here. Now we go to NB, we can see the lines it's making. And we can uh, also change what this is actually doing down here. Oh, notice also this. We deselect high quality. We can get some really nasty geometry. <laughs> yeah, usually you want to definitely keep that. <laughs> and you can create single object. So that means that the, when you actually make these edible, they they will it will remain one mesh. 
So we just click to make that arrow right quick. Oops, there was a cube. Meant to do the whole bool object. We move that around. Notice they're connected together. Otherwise, they would not normally be connected. Oops, alright, here we are. And uh, there's other different ways of doing that. When notice we have options, we can go a sub wait, okay, a union b. So it brings these objects together. We actually look inside here. Uh, the rest of the object is not in here, so they are actually part of the same object. And they intersect, so it cuts out where they intersect, and then just without the object isn't even there at any point. It just cuts away from the object that that is there that's right above it <coughs> so if we let's go back to a union B and if like I said okay if we make this edible we end up with two different objects because we didn't select that to make it one make it one mesh so we got two different objects there's a couple different ways you could fix that if you'd like to we can we just connect these and delete that so we select this, and of course it's not connected. Just select all and go to optimize here. Now it's connected. Or we could use another object. Undo that a few times with Control Z. Okay, these two different objects. If we go to the union object, or the connect object, excuse me, it will actually connect these together. And notice. It makes that smooth there. We're gonna NA render that out, and we have we have a, we can control that just the same. We can not weld it; it'll stay separate. Weld it; it stays there, and we can change the phone here, so we can have it just absolutely nothing there. So we have a, we have a variety here. Delete that. and the instance object. This object is real straightforward. You don't you, you don't stick something in the instance object. What you do with that is you can uh, you, you can right here reference object you just drag and drop this object inside of there and it will make an instance. But usually what you do is you have your object and then you go to instance and it automatically makes an instance based off of what you had selected in here. So, again, if we change one, we change the other. <clears throat> That's all instances. It's very helpful if you're doing a street scene. Maybe you want to duplicate lights several different times. Very helpful. Alright. The construction plane allows you to... It, it, generally, it replaces what you have in your viewport. So you can actually have another construction plane. You might wonder why this is useful. Well, you can change the grid here, so you can have several different, several different of these. And notice if I bring another one down and move it, you won't, you won't see it unless you get rid of this one here. If you alt click on these, click twice on those, except that's the one we're using. So you'll get the construction plane that you had, that you, that you just made there. So you can't you can't view two at once, but you can have you can change these however you want, and then have that freedom. And of course, you can delete it and get the original plan back. I generally don't use that though. 